In estimation theory and decision theory, a Bayes estimator or a Bayes action is an estimator or decision rule that minimizes the posterior expected value of a loss function. Equivalently, it maximizes the posterior expectation of a utility function. An alternative way of formulating an estimator within Bayesian statistics is maximum a posterior I estimation. Definition Suppose an unknown parameter theta is known to have a prior distribution. Let be an estimator of theta, and let be a loss function, such as squared error. The Bayes risk of is defined as, where the expectation is taken over the probability distribution of. This defines the risk function as a function of. An estimator is said to be a Bayes estimator if it minimizes the Bayes risk among all estimators. Equivalently, the estimator which minimizes the posterior expected loss for each x also minimizes the Bayes risk and therefore is a Bayes estimator. If the prior is improper then an estimator which minimizes the posterior expected loss for each x is called a generalized Bayes estimator. Examples Minimum mean square error estimation The most common risk function used for Bayesian estimation is the mean square error, also called squared error risk. The MSE is defined by where the expectation is taken over the joint distribution of an posterior mean using the MSE as risk. The Bayes estimate of the unknown parameter is simply the mean of the posterior distribution. This is known as the minimum mean square error estimator. The Bayes risk in this case is the posterior variance. Bayes estimators for conjugate priors if there is no inherent reason to prefer one prior probability distribution over another. A conjugate prior is sometimes chosen for simplicity. A conjugate prior is defined as a prior distribution belonging to some parametric family, for which the resulting posterior distribution also belongs to the same family. Conjugate priors are especially useful for sequential estimation, where the posterior of the current measurement is used as the prior in the next measurement. In sequential estimation, unless a conjugate prior is used, the posterior distribution typically becomes more complex with each added measurement, and the Bayes estimator cannot usually be calculated without resorting to numerical methods. Following are some examples of conjugate priors. If x theta is normal, x theta tilde n, and the prior is normal, theta tilde n, then the posterior is also normal, and the Bayes estimator under MSE is given by if x1 x n i i d plus on random variables she theta tilde p, and if the prior is gamma distributed theta tilde g, then the posterior is also gamma distributed. And the Bayes estimator under MSE is given by if x1 xn iid uniformly distributed chi theta tilde u, and if the prior is Pareto distributed theta tilde pa, then the posterior is also Pareto distributed. And the Bayes estimator under MSE is given by alternative risk functions. Risk functions are chosen depending on how one measures the distance between the estimate and the unknown parameter. The MSE is the most common risk function in use, primarily due to its simplicity. However, alternative risk functions are also occasionally used. The following are several examples of such alternatives. We denote the posterior generalized distribution function by posterior median and other quantiles a linear loss function with which yields the posterior median as the Bayes estimate. Another linear loss function which assigns different weights to over or subestimation. It yields a quantile from the posterior distribution and is a generalization of the previous loss function. Posterior mode The following loss function is trickier. It yields either the posterior mode or a point close to it depending on the curvature and properties of the posterior distribution. Small values of the parameter are recommended in order to use the mode as an approximation for which every real number is equally likely. 
Yet, in some sense, such a distribution seems like a natural choice for a non-informative prior, i.e., a prior distribution which does not imply a preference for any particular value of the unknown parameter. One can still define a function, but this would not be a proper probability distribution since it has infinite mass. Such measures, which are not probability distributions, are referred to as improper priors. The use of an improper prior means that the Bayes risk is undefined. As a consequence, it is no longer meaningful to speak of a Bayes estimator that minimizes the Bayes risk. Nevertheless, in many cases, one can define the posterior distribution. This is a definition, and not an application of Bayes' theorem, since Bayes' theorem can only be applied when all distributions are proper. However, it is not uncommon for the resulting posterior to be a valid probability distribution. In this case, the posterior expected loss is typically well-defined and finite. Recall that, for a proper prior, the Bayes estimator minimizes the posterior expected loss. When the prior is improper, an estimator which minimizes the posterior expected loss is referred to as a generalized Bayes estimator. Example A typical example is estimation of a location parameter with a loss function of the type. Here is a location parameter, i.e., it is common to use the improper prior in this case, especially when no other more subjective information is available. This yields so, the posterior expected loss equals the generalized Bayes estimator is the value that minimizes this expression for a given. This is equivalent to minimizing for a given in this case it can be shown that the generalized Bayes estimator has the form, for some constant. To see this, let be the value minimizing when, then, given a different value, we must minimize this is identical to, except that has been replaced by. Thus, the expression minimizing is given by, so that the optimal estimator has the form empirical Bayes estimators. A Bayes estimator derived through the empirical Bayes method is called an empirical Bayes estimator. This is done under the assumption that the estimated parameters are obtained from a common prior. For example, if independent observations of different parameters are performed, then the estimation performance of a particular parameter can sometimes be improved by using data from other observations. There are parametric and non-parametric approaches to empirical Bayes estimation. Parametric empirical Bayes is usually preferable since it is more applicable and more accurate on small amounts of data. Example The following is a simple example of parametric empirical Bayes estimation. Given past observations having conditional distribution, one is interested in estimating based on Assume that the S have a common prior which depends on unknown parameters. For example, suppose that is normal with unknown mean and variance. We can then use the past observations to determine the mean and variance of in the following way. First, we estimate the mean and variance of the marginal distribution of using the maximum likelihood approach. Next, we use the relation where in other moments of the conditional distribution, which are assumed to be known. In particular, suppose that in that, we then have finally, we obtain the estimated moments of the prior, for example, if, and if we assume a normal prior, we conclude that, from which the Bayes estimator of based on can be calculated. Properties. Admissibility Bayes rules having finite Bayes risk are typically admissible. The following are some specific examples of admissibility theorems. If a Bayes rule is unique then it is admissible. For example, as stated above, under mean squared error the Bayes rule is unique and therefore admissible. If theta belongs to a discrete set, then all Bayes rules are admissible. If theta belongs to a continuous, and if the risk function R is continuous in theta for every delta, then all Bayes rules are admissible. By contrast, generalized Bayes rules often have undefined Bayes risk in the case of improper priors. These rules are often inadmissible and the verification of their admissibility can be difficult. 
For example, the generalized Bayes estimator of a location parameter theta based on Gaussian samples is inadmissible for, this is known as Stein's phenomenon. Asymptotic efficiency let theta be an unknown random variable, and suppose that are IID samples with density. Let be a sequence of Bayes estimators of theta based on an increasing number of measurements. We are interested in analyzing the asymptotic performance of this sequence of estimators, i.e., the performance of for large n. To this end, it is customary to regard theta as a deterministic parameter whose true value is, under specific conditions, for large samples, the posterior density of theta is approximately normal. In other words, for large n, the effect of the prior probability on the posterior is negligible, where i is the Fisher information of theta zero. It follows that the Bayes estimated delta n under MSE is asymptotically efficient. Another estimator which is asymptotically normal and efficient is the maximum likelihood estimator. The relations between the maximum likelihood and Bayes estimators can be shown in the following simple example. Consider the estimator of theta based on binomial sample x tilde b where theta denotes the probability for success. Assuming theta is distributed according to the conjugate prior, which in this case is the beta distribution b. The posterior distribution is known to be b. Thus, the Bayes estimator under MSE is the MLE in this case is x, n and so we get. The last equation implies that, for n infinity, the Bayes estimator is close to the MLE. On the other hand, when n is small, the prior information is still relevant to the decision problem and affects the estimate. To see the relative weight of the prior information, assume that R equals B. In this case each measurement brings in one new bit of information. The formula above shows that the prior information has the same weight as a plus B bit of the new information. In applications, one often knows very little about fine details of the prior distribution. In particular, there is no reason to assume that it coincides with B exactly. In such a case, one possible interpretation of this calculation is, there is a non-pathological prior distribution with the mean value 0.5 and the standard deviation d which gives the weight of prior information, equal to 1, minus 1 bits of new information. Another example of the same phenomena is the case when the prior estimate in a measurement are normally distributed. If the prior is centered at B with deviation sigma, and the measurement is centered at B with deviation sigma, then the posterior is centered at, with weights in this weighted average being alpha equals sigma squared, beta equals sigma squared. Moreover, the squared posterior deviation is sigma squared plus sigma squared. In other words, the prior is combined with the measurement in exactly the same way as if it were an extra measurement to take into account. For example, if sigma equals sigma 2, then the deviation of four measurements combined together matches the deviation of the prior, and the weights alpha, beta in the formula for posterior match this. The weight of the prior is four times the weight of the measurement. Combining this prior with n measurements with average v results in the posterior centered at, in particular, the prior plays the same role as four measurements made in advance. In general, the prior has the weight of squared measurements. Compared to the example of binomial distribution, there the prior has the weight of squared minus 1 measurements. One can see that the exact weight does depend on the details of the distribution, but when sigma sigma, the difference becomes small. Practical example of Bayes estimators. The Internet Movie Database uses a formula for calculating and comparing the ratings of films by its users, including their top-rated 250 titles which is claimed to give a true Bayesian estimate. The following Bayesian formula was initially used to calculate a weighted average score for the top 250, though the formula has since changed.
where equals weighted rating equals average rating for the movie as a number from 1 to 10 equals equals number of votes for the movie equals equals the weight given to the prior estimate equals the mean vote across the whole pool note that w is just the weighted arithmetic mean of r and c with weight vector as the number of ratings surpasses m the confidence of the average rating surpasses the confidence of the prior knowledge and the weighted Bayesian rating approaches a straight average. The closer V is to zero, the closer W gets to C, where W is the weighted rating and C is the average rating of all films. So, in simpler terms, films with very few ratings, votes will have a rating weighted towards the average across all films. While films with many ratings, votes will have a rating weighted towards its average rating. IMDb's approach ensures that a film with only a few hundred ratings, all at 10, would not rank above The Godfather, for example, with a 9.2 average from over 500,000 ratings.